Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It's time for Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. Thank you for joining me today on Faith to Live By. This is Sue Taylor. We have been sharing out of the book of Proverbs, chapters 1, 2, and today I want to share a little bit out of chapter 3. I love the book of Proverbs. I said earlier in the program uh, this week that Psalms kind of teaches us how to get along with God, how to to just love God, have comfort with God, and kind of curl up and, and just be, it's like a hug from God. And Proverbs is one that teaches us how to get along with people and even how to to really learn the value and the benefits of wisdom. Chapter 3 is no exception from chapter 1 and 2. We learned how in chapter 1 and 2 to fear God, to shun evil, and to heed the call of wisdom. And this whole book of Proverbs is about providing wisdom from God. It's about prodding our soul to gain this godly wisdom and so to produce a life of peace and discipline. So it's a threefold purpose. I believe that this book of Proverbs was written for was to provide us with the wisdom of God, to prod our souls, to gain his wisdom, and then for us to produce a life of peace and discipline. Um, Verses one and two says, my son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands for length of days and long life in peace they will add to you don't forget it says teaching and commands in Deuteronomy chapter 4 it says that we need God tells us to watch against forgetting God in every area of your life Um, so what causes us to forget God Um, Well, if you continue to go back and read in Deuteronomy, even chapter 6, 10 through 12, says that prosperity tends to keep us, uh, to help, to make us forget about God. Uh, The very thing verse 2 tells us that remembering God brings uh, is what um, it says for length of days and long life and peace they will add to you, but you know, the prosperity of the world um, will make us tend to forget God. And it kind of seems contradictory, doesn't it? But you know what? The prosperity God is talking about, beloved, is not always money. It's not always gain. It's not always material things. But it's the things that nothing, nobody, the world or people can ever take away from you. It's that length of days and long life and peace that they add to you. That is the value of not forgetting God. In fact, you know, we have a duty to remember God in all areas of our life. That is knowing the wisdom of God is first of all to do your duty to remember God, the God of all wisdom. You know, there's all kinds of areas. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 4 talks about that we are to remember God in the battles of life. And we are to apply his wisdom in the battles of life. In Psalm 63, we are to remember God in the night seasons when times seem dark. And we feel like sometimes God is nowhere around. God wants us to remember him. He wants us to remember them as him in our youth and the early stages of life as laid out in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And in times of trouble, such as Jonah was in, in Jonah chapter 2, or when we are away from home or wherever we go or wherever we find ourselves, we are to remember God in everything and to apply his wisdom. The prosperity that God wants us to have, along with the material, is the wisdom, though, the peace and a life of love toward God and man. So, you know, it isn't prosperity isn't just about the material. And we get so caught up in that. Our daily little needs of what we're going to eat and what we're going to wear and and uh, how our 401ks are doing. And especially in these times and what God wants is to have peace in the midst of it. That's why it's so important to walk in his wisdom. Verses 3 and 4 of chapter 3 says, Let not mercy and truth forsake you. 
bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. We are to walk in mercy and in truth. In fact, so much so that they are to be as though they are bound around our neck. You know, kind of like something tight on your neck and it's to be written in your heart. Mercy is very, very important. Matthew 5, 7 says, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Luke six thirty six says, Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. In Micah 6, 8, He has showed you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. You know, I really believe that it is difficult to have a humble heart before God without mercy because mercy and humility go together. God is trying to teach us, beloved here, the the value of his wisdom, how we can stay in his wisdom um, and how that without that wisdom, we won't know God's mercy. We won't know uh, his truth. And, you know, God wants us to always know his mercy. His mercy is eternal. Psalm 103. It is boundless. Psalm 108. Mercy prolongs life. Lamentations 3, chapter, er, chapter 3, 22 and 23. Mercy encourages repentance and mercy forgives sin. And mercy makes our salvation possible. In chapter, in verse 4, it says, So find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Mercy and truth promotes favor and a good name. Who wants to be around a judgmental person and one who is not truthful? In the sight of God first, it says it, that he we will find favor. And then in the the sight of man. It is so important that we gain the wisdom of God so we know how to walk in mercy and how to walk in truth because we need them both. We are to bind them, it says, like around our neck, not to forsake them, to write them on the tablet of our heart. And then it says in verses 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. What a beautiful, beautiful promise of God. It says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Trust To me, trust, I have my own definition of trust. It's true rest under severe testing or trial. I always think of that, true rest under severe testing or trial. Contrast between trust in God and leaning on our own understanding is self-confidence. Now, we should always have God confidence. Trust means that we seek God with all our heart in any given circumstance. In fact, Jeremiah tells us, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. What is holding us captive? Is it unforgiveness? Is it wrong thoughts, wrong motives, worry, fear, dislike of self? In all our ways, we are to acknowledge Him. Nothing too large, nothing too small. And it says He will make our ways, our paths straight and give health to our bodies. Let us put away today conceit and self-confidence. And beloved child of God, let us gain the wisdom of God the valuable lessons laid out in His Word. You've been listening to Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. If you would like to write with your comments or to request a copy of this program for an $8 donation, write Sue Taylor, 10827 Highway 86 East, Neosho, Missouri, 64850. 
Sue Taylor is a member of the KNEO team and a keynote speaker at several church and women's events throughout the four-state area. To book Sue for your next event, contact Sky High Radio at 417-451-5636.